Hello, welcome to Undercover. I'm your host, Kevin Bousquet. Now, we are continuing on where we have been talking about mortgage fraud and identity theft. And um, I'm just going to basically tell you some of the stuff that's been happening during the week that we were taping this show. And I'm going to just read you off some of the headlines that have happened literally within two days of us taping this show. First one is, is that there was a huge uh, bust in uh, Mississauga, Ontario, slightly outside of Toronto, if you're not from the Toronto area. And when they busted this gentleman, they found uh, blank social insurance cards, blank driver's license, blank passports, um, printing machines, inkjet, ink, inkjet machines, photocopy machines, specialized stuff that would manufacture these documents. Now, when um, City Pulse in Toronto did the story, uh, they interviewed a lawyer in Toronto who, on the front of his desk, had a driver's license. And in the driver's license was a picture of his dog. And it sits on the front of his desk to remind people how easily it is to get your identity or get a fake driver's license. Now, the other uh, story that's coming in the news is the whole issue with respect to uh, HomeSense and winners where they're basically telling the public that you know your data might have been compromised mm -hmm. when you were shopping there. And what's interesting about this to me is in the olden days, hackers were trying to steal money. They were trying to do things where they were hacking into systems to try to steal money. It's a whole different ball game now because what these hackers want is your identity. They're looking for driver's licenses, they're looking for your name, your address, uh, your social insurance number, your date of birth, your credit cards, because it's more valuable to them than stealing money because they can take that identity and they can apply for hordes and hordes of credit and mortgages. Now, if you're a parent out there, you might want to be interested in an article. It's a warning in the United States by the Federal Trade Commission and I'm going to read you what it says here. It says four hundred thousand children have their IDs stolen every year and you might be asking who would want the identification of your child I'll tell you the reason why they want your child's name and your child's address is so these fraudsters can go out and they can apply for credit because a child's credit hasn't been established yet it hasn't been damaged yet and they can basically take that fresh name and that fresh address generate a credit bureau, apply for credit, and generate a larger credit bureau so they can they can uh, prepare mortgages, they can do a driver's license number, they can do credit card debt, that kind of thing. So, look, folks, this is a problem that is completely and utterly uh, out of control. Now, my guest today is Jennifer Fidian Green, and she is a partner with uh, Grant Thornton. Uh, an accounting firm in Canada which is the fifth largest accounting firm uh, in Canada. They have offices just about everywhere. Jennifer, like myself, she's a certified fraud examiner. She's a chartered accountant. She is an investigative forensic accountant. Her CV goes for uh, ever. She's a, as I said before, she's a partner uh, with the firm. Um, I have a business relationship uh, with one of their offices in uh, Calgary. There's a gentleman there who I've done business with many years, so we have a, an investigative uh, relationship together. Now, here we have someone, certified fraud examiner, many designations, a partner with a very prestigious um, firm. Now, you may be thinking that we're going to be talking about forensic accounting today, which we probably will eventually, but Jennifer had two homes purchased in her name in Gretzky's, Wayne Gretzky's hometown of Brantford. And guess what? Those homes, she didn't purchase them. She had no idea that someone had gone and purchased uh, two properties in her name. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you. First of all, wow. Okay, uh, that's my first impression, wow. So how does this work? You wake up one morning and you find out you've bought two houses. Like what happened here as far as you finding out that you'd bought two homes? I wake up one morning, I go to work, everything seems normal. I pick up the phone and uh, there's, there's, there's a man on the other end of the phone who says, lady, you're not paying your debts. Why aren't you making your mortgage payments? Okay. Um, the, 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 the warning bell started going off in my head right away. 
Um, he starts talking to me about a property in Brantford, Ontario. I said, I don't own a property in Brantford, Ontario. He says, yes, you do. So he, uh, and I, I immediately say, you've got the wrong number. So I, he's, start he's to, a I start to hang up. He's a debt collector. Okay. He's phoning on behalf of a finance company. And he wants to know the, the I think it's three months now that the mortgage payments haven't been made. We, um, um, he says, well, wait a minute, aren't you Jennifer Fitting Green? You work with Grant Thornton? And I say yes. And he says, well, you, you're definitely the person I want to talk to. So I get off the phone with him, get some details, and I, I arrange to meet with him the next morning. So I start, I'm, um, so I'm upset. I'm sorry, you're meeting with the collector. I, I arrange to meet with him because okay. I need to know what's going on. This is, I investigate, but I'm, I'm upset. You're emotionally, what's going on? And you have to clear your whole work day, right? There's lots of things going on. I called my husband right away. And I said, uh, not sure what's going on, but can you get our credit reports? On, I, I know that you can go get our, our credit reports over the internet. Costs some money, but you can do it. So he, we, he goes to the Equifax database, and he goes to the um, uh, TransUnion Trans one. And he gets them. You have to pay, I think, $20 each, and he had to answer a few questions in each one. He said the questions were pretty easy to answer. So we got our credit reports. He calls me back, and he says, um, uh, his are fine. And he says, mine were a mess. Okay. And what do you mean by a mess? So, so let me get there. But at the right. same time, while he's doing that, I'm, I'm saying, well, Brantford, Ontario, what's going on? So I, I work in a, in a group. We investigate fraud. This is what we do. And actually, one of my colleagues, who I think you know, Peter, I said, Peter, can you do a check on my name to see if there's any property registered in my name in Brantford? Come back. So pretty quickly, like probably about half an hour after having this, this phone call, um, I've got pieces of paper in my hand, land registry documents, official documents that says I own properties in Brantford, Ontario. My name does, and they're mortgaged to the hilt. Wow. So the properties on paper said they were worth about 500000 There were mortgages of $496,000 between the two properties. And you don't on live there. in Brantford. I don't right? live in Brantford. I've driven by it. I haven't really, I haven't, I haven't been there. Um, uh, so I'm pretty upset now. I'm pretty upset. So the credit reports... Um, in my, it wasn't that I had a lot of credit cards or loans that were in my name that I didn't know about, but the last few pages, particularly of the Equifax one, there was, there was almost two full pages of, of names that had been listed, companies and individuals who had accessed my data, and, and I wasn't familiar with any okay, of them. So there are I, other companies, credit card companies, finance, who have basically have gone banks, in there. Banks, okay. mortgage finance company, loan companies, names that I was completely unfamiliar with. And this is with. an indication, obviously, that the, someone's applying for products, these products in your name. In correct? my name, that's okay. right. So repeatedly, they're accessing my data with Equifax, and, and, and they're getting that data. So I... Um, um, I, s I start to investigate my case. I need to know what's going on, and I need, I, need to, I need to change the paper that has my name on it, and I need to let them know it's not okay. So I go the next morning, and I meet with this guy who, who called me, this mortgage collector. He's actually a really nice guy who's doing his job. And I'm pretty wary of them because I don't know what's going on. I know that, that I haven't done anything wrong, and I'm, I'm thinking, what have they done? So we were sort of, you know... Um, um, checking each other out, and they, they realized pretty quickly that this was a case of identity theft. When I walked into the room, Kevin, I mean, they had a, um, a file a couple of inches thick related to Jennifer Fiddy and Green that they had lent money to. All wrong, all fraudulent, all documents that were wrong, and they're opening their file, they're flipping through it, they've got application forms, copies of tax returns, notice of tax copies assessments. Copies so actually fake tax returns? All fake. Okay. The only real information they had was my name and my SIN number. So the fraudsters got that data somewhere. So they had, um, this mortgage financing company had faxed photocopies of ID. They had a Canadian citizenship card and a SIN card. Now I was born in Canada, so I have a passport. So I brought my passport to the meeting, so we knew right away we were dealing with, with fake and ID. Do they have any photo ID in their file at all? They, they have a, a faxed photocopy of this Canadian citizenship card. The, the photo is so hard to see, you can't, you can't even tell it's, it's not me, and it's definitely not me. Did they, right? not, did they not meet with this woman who was? They, they, so, so I'm starting to understand now that um, finance companies can loan money to a name without talking to the, to the person, without meeting the person. A lot of it's done over internet, mail, and fax. And they're dealing through a mortgage broker, so the finance company never actually meets the individual. So, okay, so they we're primarily talking about mortgage brokers, not so much bank mortgages in this situation. This is primarily private mortgage lenders, correct? 
for, in my case, yes. uh, well, one was a private mortgage lender, but the other was um, a branch of CIBC. So wow. there was two loans. So one was CIBC, one of our major banks, and the other was a, was a private mortgage okay. lender at the time. So we're talking about mortgage brokers, but we're talking about the institutions behind who lend the funds. Wow. So from my perspective, we have, I, I, I'm upset because an institute, an organization, a lending company lent money to my name, and they didn't do enough due diligence to figure out that it wasn't really me. Okay. And as far as I'm concerned, they have all they have all the ability, they have all the power because they decide whether or not to lend the funds. You think they can ask all the questions they want. You think it would have been different if they basically s said, "Look, she's got to come in." Like it was, if there was an actual physical attendant. You think it would have changed anything? Because you've Absolutely. indicated they've got fake tax returns, they've got all of this stuff that looks real. But you think things would have been different if they actually had this woman who was in person and you come into their office? I, I think it makes it that much harder for the fraudsters sure. to do. Today, it's too easy. Okay. It's too easy. Okay. And I think we've got a system in place today where uh, a loan, uh, a lending company might rely on a law firm to do that face-to-face -face check, a lawyer to do that. Okay. Um, I think we've got groups today that are, are organized with, with lawyers and appraisers, working with mortgage brokers, working with these, 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 these criminals who are stealing identities and, and taking on and doing this kind of this crime to, to, to benefit. Wow. They're stealing money. So, okay, so what's, what, okay, so you're faced with these two properties, you're on title, you owe the money, like how are you getting out of this now? Well, I pretty pretty uh, quickly put both um, uh, finance companies, both of the lending, or on notice that uh, this was their problem, not mine. And I think as a victim, we need to do that. Um, I actually notified CIBC. They didn't know yet that they had a problem. I called them and said, listen, you've got a mortgage registered against my name, and, and there's a problem here because it, I'm an identity theft victim. You need to clean it up. I told them about it. So it hadn't even gotten onto their list yet. Okay, but how do you get out of this? Like, how do you get out of this nightmare? <laughs> so okay. for, for, for each of the organizations, I actually ended up signing an affidavit saying that it wasn't me. So I understand that each then does their own internal investigation. They end up claiming the lost money because they won't get paid. They're the ones who won't get paid. Um, uh, they end up claiming it through, through insurance policies and, 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 and different means. So they end up being made whole. Okay, so... So through filing these affidavits, you said it's not me, it's a mistake. Are you off the hook now? I'm off the hook for the mortgage financing. Okay, That's so right. Let's talk about your credit bureau because you just indicated now that you've got pages and pages of inquiries. Now, is there credit card debt being applied in your name? Is there other stuff? I was on? lucky that there was not any credit card debt in all my right. name, so I didn't have to clean up. So, but that what way. about all of these inquiries? Like, how do you, like, we've had a show here where we've talked about the victimization where people spend you know, years trying to restore their credit bureau and they never recover from this. Now, maybe things are different because you're in the business of I, understanding about fraud and credit bureaus and stuff like that, but can you like walk us through what you had to do as far as trying to get your credit back and clean it up? I mean, you're an accountant. I mean, your right. credit bureau right. must mean everything to you because, you know, when I do background investigations on people that are working in accounting capacities, one of the things employers want to know, look, if she owes a lot of money, you know, she might be that kind of person to grab from the till, kind of speak. So we That's want to make right. sure that she's bondable, insurable, and she has a clean bureau. So a lot of times.